I'm Cheryl Capizzuti. You're here in my studio in Lawrenceville in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I've actually been working in this space for less than a year. It's sort of been my pandemic quarantine location for my large scale work with um, found and discarded materials. Yes. So the pieces you're looking at here are um, made out of dryer lint donated from people from all over the country. And I've just been sort of using this detritus of everyday life for a long time that, um, I don't know, it speaks to me about it's sort of like our cultural shedding and making work that um, connects to that and who we are as people, something that we share has always been interesting to me. And I've been working on, you know, making bigger sculptures that maybe evoke more, um, I don't know, more thought on what it means to be human right now. So, I mean, I'm making work that the work looks almost like it's made out of stone or concrete from a distance. I think I'm trying to make work that has almost a monumental feel to it. But then when you get close, you sort of can see the layers of the material and the detritus of our life. So um, the tickets, the receipts, the gum wrappers, the threads, the pen caps that we find in our pockets of things that we don't even think about is something that I've been sort of like interested in experimenting with and sort of that play between um, hard and soft or um, beautiful and awful <laughs> is, you know, sort of that play in opposites in my work is something I've always been really interested in. So I was actually born in suburban Pittsburgh and went away to college and came back really because I fell in love. And I thought that we would be here for a year and then we were out of here. And while my husband was finishing up his um, graduate work and honestly, one year living right in the city and making art like 20 years ago, Pittsburgh was sort of a playground for young creative people like you could do I felt like you could do anything, make anything. I was do I started doing installations in a laundromat. I started doing all kinds of like inventive stuff that maybe you couldn't do in a more um, expensive city. And you know, 20 years later, 25 years later now, I still love it. I still feel like my op opportunities haven't ended here. And um, I don't know. It's I also have kids, so it's a great place to you know, have teenagers running around the place. And um, it's a fairly affordable city where you can afford to own a home and have a studio and work as an artist, which isn't true everywhere. And I've been fortunate in that regard. So, um, I mean, I was like, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, I bought a house with a carriage house. And that has been my primary working space for most of my professional life. And actually most people in Pittsburgh know me as a puppet maker. The, the cool thing about Pittsburgh is young, poor people can come and buy houses. Like, so I bought my first house when I was 22 for less than $50,000. And I have always had a studio space in a home that I've owned. Now I know that that's um, not possible for everybody, but in Pittsburgh, um, everyone I know has a studio, um, whether it's in their home or there's also rental spaces, um, like all over the place, it seems like. It seems like a realistic place to get studio space if you're committed to your practice. I mean, you have to, you know, like there's always an expense to making and I've always been completely committed to my creative practice and not having a studio space is not an option. And in Pittsburgh, you can do it.